Hello trainers, how is everyone's ranked games going? Hopefully they're going well, because if they're not, they're about to get a whole lot worse. With more and more people getting the ride on every day, ranked may soon become overrun with all these electro drifting, charge beam having little monstrosities. But is it unkillable? I'm here to tell you, not exactly. You can stand a chance against it with the correct Pokemon. So. Let's go through the roles and see which Pokemon actually stand a chance of having you win a game against this new EX Pokemon. First up, let's go over the all-rounders. Within the lowest tier, F tier, we have Garchomp, Dragonite, Aegislash, Buzzwole, Mewtwo X, and Blaziken. Garchomp finds itself here because it has no actual way of getting on top of Maridon. If Maridon goes Charge Beam, he outranges Garchomp's Dragon Rush and Dragon Claw ability. Also, Dig and whatever, Earthquake, no one goes that. If Maridon goes Electro Drift, then Garchomp can't get a steady gauge on where to grab him within Dragon Rush. Dragonite finds itself here largely in part due to the same reasons that Garchomp faces. It just gets outranged and poked down. If you go Outrage and E-Speed though, you might stand a little bit more of a chance than a Garchomp, but you'll still be taking a bunch of damage to get in range to actually go ahead and E-Speed the Maridon. Aegislash also has no opportune way to get on top of Maridon. Yes, it has King Shield and it could block some damage, and it has Sacred Sword and Shadow Claw, which allows it to get on top of opponents, but considering Charge Beam, it doesn't make it very easy for the sword to do that. Even if Maridon is going Electro Drift, it'll have a really hard time trying to catch it out when it's zooming past it and dealing damage along the way. Buzzwole is very strong into melee Pokemon, but Maridon's not a melee Pokemon. If it gets a lucky catch out, maybe from a bush or something like that, it can do a bit of damage, but Electro Drift will just move on right past it, and his suplexes don't work when Maridon's screaming at you. So yeah, uh, outside of a lucky Unite or a lucky Grab or what have you, Buzzwole's probably not the most optimal pick for Maridon. Mewtwo X really has no reliable way whatsoever on getting on top of Maridon. It's very much a, hey, I see you come closer to me type Pokemon. The problem is Maridon will almost never get closer to you. So you can't really future sight it. Your best bet is going Psy Strike, but even then, the range on that for Mewtwo X is, is so low that you're gonna get poked down and killed. And lastly, we have Blaziken, who really doesn't have any sort of way on getting on top of or even threatening Maridon, a very melee focused Pokemon. Maybe if you hang out in a bush and you charge up your kick, you'll do a lot of damage, maybe even kill a Maridon, but in normal circumstances, you're probably never going to outbox or even kill this thing. Next up, we've got the C tier, and that includes Lucario, Azumarill, Tyranitar, and Gyarados. Lucario is here due to E-Speed and Power Punch. E-Speed is a really good mobility move, you can get on a lot of targets, and it does a decent bit of damage as well. Power Punch, basically the same thing with the added bonus that you take reduced damage, and at level 11, you can't really be CC'd, so if you're trying to get on top of Maridon, his allies can't stop you. Bonus points because of the Unite move, so when you're on top of him and you just use your Unite move, it's going to shred through him like butter. Azumarill is here basically only for its Unite move. It's a really good tool to get on top of pretty much anyone in the game, including Maridon. You'll do a bit of damage. Hopefully you can kill it, uh, but if you don't, that's, that's kind of why he's only slightly above F tier. I'll be the first to admit that Tyranitar in this tier might be somewhat of a mistake, but in my mind, if you go Ancient Power, you'll be able to dodge the long shooting beam that Maridon is able to do. If he's going Electro Drift, maybe you'll get lucky and stun him coming out of Ancient Power. Sand Tomb, I'm not really sure how that plays up against into Maridon, but if you use your ultimate and you're able to get him below a threshold, at least you'll be able to kill him faster. Like Azumarill, Gyarados is mainly here due to its really good Unite move. You can't really get hit if you're untargetable, and once you come out of the ground and you knock people up, you're also doing a bit of damage. He also has Bounce and Waterfall, which could be somewhat good in getting on top of a ride on, and Dragon Breath doesn't hurt either with dealing a decent bit of damage and also increasing your attack speed just to make sure that you can rip it down. Moving on, we have the B tier, which consists of three Pokemon, Machamp, Zacian, and 
Blue Shifu. Machamp is in this tier mainly due to Dynamic Punch, though possibly Submission will work as well, because once you get on top of Maridon, you can just deal a ton of damage. You can even do a Unite move. Hopefully it's not Electro Drifting away from you, or it's in the second stage of Charge Me, where it's just yelling at you. Outside of that, you should be able to eliminate it fairly easily, I hope. Zacian made it up to this tier, mainly due to agility. If you agility right, you could perchance get on top of a Maridon and then hit it with a Sacred Sword or a double Sacred Sword. And I'm thinking that should be enough damage to burst it down and or kill it, but yeah, it, that's your only hope basically. Blue Shifu has good mobility, not so much damage anymore, but if you can get on top of a Maridon, maybe you can CC lock it with your Unite move so your team can follow up and kill it. But other than that, it's not really helpful at all. In the A tier, we have Scizor, Urshifu Black, Scyther, and Metagross. Both Scizor and Scyther are here for the same reason, it's their Unite move. It's a really good tool at bursting down opponents, though in order to get on top of Maridon, you would probably have to go double hit no matter which evolution you go for. Urshifu is here because of its Unite move and its single strike move. Unite move allows you to lock onto the Maridon, hit it up, deal a ton of damage after it falls down by hitting a really good crit with your single strike. And it's AoE, so if you get collateral damage from the enemy team, you're, you're in a good position for a really good team fight. Metagross is on here for three reasons. Number one, it's Unite move. Who would have thought? You can wall off a Maridon if you use it at the right time, so it really can't escape unless it's going Electro Drift. But if it is, it's out of your wall and you don't have to worry about it at that point. It also has Gyro Ball, which will make it tankier, and it does a decent bit of damage. And if you don't want that, you also have number three, Meteor Mash. You do a bunch of damage, and it'll probably not one-shot him a ride on, but maybe two-shot it. Finally, we have the S tier for Charizard, Serena, and Mimikyu. In my experience, Charizard does a really good job with not zoning a ride on, but almost going one for one. You still get a little bit outranged, but if you can hit it with a Fire Blast or a Flamethrower, at least you'll have a decent enough trade. And... The Unite move, again, if you grab Maridon, it's pretty much zero to death for it. it, it there's no counterplay for Maridon if you use that move, it's, it's, it's gone. Serena is in S tier because it has a lot of good chase potential, a lot of good damage, and the Unite move kind of singles out Maridon, throws it down, and just slaughters it. It, it. it destroys Maridon. The only caveat is that you gotta make it out of the early stages because we all know playing this character in the early game it, it's it's not the best but make it past that get to Serena and you're good the final S tier mon is Mimikyu and that's because of Shadow Sneak you can get on top of Maridon very easily and just burst it down with Shadow Claw or play rough play rough is probably preferable considering that you'll probably take a lot of damage from either Electro Drift so if it runs away you follow it with play rough or if it's shooting its little laser you won't get hit by it because you're in play rough and if it starts its Unite move, you just ulti it to stop it. Or if it starts its Electro Drift charging, you ulti it to stop it. Or if it starts firing its laser with Charge Beam, you ulti it to stop it. Mimikyu is probably the best all-rounder to handle Maridon, and it, it's just, it just eats it for breakfast, dinner, lunch, everything. Moving into attackers, we have the F tier, and they pretty much all suffer from the same problem. Cinderace, Ninetales, Sylveon, and Duraludon have no reliable way of actually hitting Maridon other than walking up into its insanely high range, taking damage, and then trading it for a little bit of damage. It's not a smart move. You probably have to flank with all of these Pokemon because you're not getting on top of it, and you're probably not getting any damage in on it if it's shooting you from super far away. With Charge Beam and with Electro Drift, it's probably assassinating you. In C tier, we have Cramorant, Pikachu, Greninja, and Espeon. Cramorant with Hurricane and Surf can do a decent bit of damage to Maridon, and when it goes into its Unite move, it can actually zone fairly well, probably even trade the same amount of damage that it's getting back from Maridon. Though it is still a squishy Pokemon, and in the landing phase, you probably won't have the best time, because again, it's just going to yell at you, hurt you, or it's just going to drift right through and just assassinate you. Pikachu is here because the Volt Tackle and Electro Ball. Now, Volt Tackle can catch unaware Maridons out and set them up really well for a kill for your team. And Electro Ball is really spammable and can get a Maridon low enough. Just be careful because it still outranges you. You still will take damage. Your, your Night Move isn't that bad, especially for team fighting. It might even, it won't one tap Maridon, but it'll get them really low if you get it right. 
Greninja is here due to its assassiny playstyle. Whether you go double team or smoke screen, it'll confuse on right on enough. Maybe you can get in close to start hitting it with your secondary ability. And also your night move does a bunch of damage. You can easily assassinate on right on if you play well. Espeon is here due to stored power and side shock. Side shock, I believe, has about the same range as a regular charge beam. So if you're lucky, you could probably stun and do a bunch of damage to right on. And Stored Power is Stored Power. It'll auto-lock onto my ride on and you can run away. Basically a really safe Pokemon to pick. Probably the best one in this tier to play into my ride on. And then, you gotta watch out for your Unite move though, because you'll be a sitting duck, and the ah, the, the supercharged charge beam from my ride on, it's, it'll, it'll hit you, it'll shred you in your Unite, because it all range that little circle that you got, so be careful. In B tier, we have Venusaur, Mew, Gardevoir, Delphox, and Chandelure. Venu and Mew are here for one reason only, Solar Beam. Uh, I'm not sure if it completely outranges Charge Beam, but it does a little bit of damage. Just watch out for Electro Drift and you should be fine. Gardevoir is here because of its Unite move. You could catch out a on fairly easy with it, and hopefully that'll help your team win a team fight. Delph Fox is here because Fire Tornado goes crazy. Fire Spin. Fire Spin goes crazy. It could definitely catch out on. And your Unite move does a decent bit of damage and can actually shred them fairly easily if they're caught in a choke point. Chandelure's flamethrowers can really hurt, especially since they can be reset fairly easily. And if you go overheat, you can hit the enemy and then you can have your final one lock onto my ride on for a little bit of poke damage. Also, Chandelure's Unite move, since it blinds people, you can hopefully blind Maridon so he can't really see who he's hitting and then maybe appear behind or on the side of him and shred him down with the final tick of your Unite move. In the A tier we have Decidueye, Dragapult, and Mega Mewtwo Y. I believe Decidueye's arrows, his spirit shackle, outrange Maridon a decent bit so you can poke him down from afar. Also your Shadow Snake can slow him and also it's just free damage. Your Unite move definitely outranges him, and you can poke him down if you're good at using and aiming it. Dragapult's Phantom Force makes him pretty much annoying for anyone to deal with. You can go invisible, so Maridon won't know where he's aiming or where to hit you, and if you get stacks on it, you can just start ripping people apart like butter. And since Maridon's an attacker, albeit one of the tankier attackers, he can still just get shred down by you. Mewtwo may have its work cut out for it because Timmy Studios has a new favorite EX attacker. But if you teleport enough, it, it comes up very fast. So you can probably dodge most, if not all, of Maridon's abilities. I don't think Future Sight's the best thing to go against Maridon. But if you go Psy Strike, at least you'll be able to have some lock on damage and a potential knock up. Also, your ultimate is still very good. Finally, in the S tier, we have Glaceon, gee, I wonder why, and Inteleon. Glaceon, Icicle Spear. Next, Inteleon is really good into Maridon because it might be the only Pokemon in game that outranges it outright. Snipeshot is really good and you have a damage modifier on it, so you're probably one-shotting or two-shotting this thing. And if it gets close enough to you, you have your Unite move and that's just free crits and again, damage modifier. So you'll probably shred that thing in three to five hits. Really good Pokemon to go up against the dragon. Moving on, we have Speedsters, and they're actually really good into Maridon. Who would have thought an assassin is good into an attacker? So the lowest tier we have is B, and that only has Dodrio in it. Dodrio is good against Maridon if you get on top of it, but the problem is it still outranges you, and if it goes Electro Drift, it's probably a better assassin than you. Not a thousand percent sure for that, but if you go Drill Peck, you still have to run at it and it's going to hit you hard and you can't even push it back if it's in its final stage of charge beam. If you go try attack, sure you can try and shoot at it, but it still outranges you, so you probably won't even really hit it that hard. In the A tier, we have Gengar, Absol, and Zerora. Getting hit by a Dream Eater is almost a death sentence for anyone, and that holds true for Maridon as well. And you can go invisible with your Unite move, so Maridon won't be able to see you, just lurk upon it. It'll still get the indicator that you're near, but if you play your cards right, you could probably assassinate it in one to two hits. Absol is really good at getting onto other Pokemon, and you can definitely kill this Maridon within one to two hits if you're going Night Slash and Psycho Cut. If you're going Sucker Punch and Pursuits, you might have a little bit more difficulty, but it can still be done. 
and if you use your Unite move, you're untargetable, and you do damage, so, you know, you could probably kill it like that too. Whether you go Wild Charge or Volt Switch, Zeraora is going to have a really easy time getting off top of Maraidon and dealing a bunch of damage. Bonus point still because your Unite move tracks things, so you can cast your Unite move, go away, have it get knocked up, go back in somehow, and then just, you know, complete the job. In the S tier, we have Talonflame, Leafeon, G, I wonder why, Meowskarada, and Zoroark. Talonflame, S tier, because of fly, dodge moves, and then dive. With Leafeon, you only need to know two steps. First step, acquire target. Second step, alt target and kill it. Meowskarada can get on Maridon fairly easy. If you go double team, you can play a little bit of mind games with it, have it shoot your clone, and then stun itself, or waste its anything on your clone. Or if you want to, you know, switch places with your clone, you can go in and then finish it off with maybe Flower Trick. If you're going Trailblaze though, you can just hop onto it whenever you like and then get an attack speed buff, hit it with Night Slash and rip it apart. If all else fails, you can always just use your Unite move and just deal a ton of damage to it. A good Zoroark pretty much KOs any Pokemon in game. If you're going Faint Attack, you get an Execute move that does a lot of damage at the final sprint of that move. If you're going Night Slash, you get Immunity Frames and a bunch of damage whenever you land. If all else fails, yell to the sky, do a bunch of damage around you, you should be able to kill something. In this case, hopefully Maridon. Next up, we have Defenders, and starting off in the F tier, we have Greedit and Gudra. They both suffer from around the same type of problems. They'll try to approach Maridon, they'll take a bunch of damage getting to it. Once they get to it, if they get to it, they don't really have a reliable way of CCing it. In the C tier, we have Mamoswine and Lapras, and again, they kind of suffer from the same difficulties fighting a Maridon. They can summon obstacles to try and CC the beast, but the thing is going to outrange them and poke them down a fair decent bit. In the B tier, we have Snorlax. Snorlax with Heavy Slam, you have a reliable way on getting on top of Maridon, and if it has any allies near it, you can knock them up as well. And then you have Block, which, if you do it right, you could probably get Maridon into a wall so it can't really start using any of its abilities, and bonus points if you block other people on the enemy team. Most of all, it's a really good meat shield because you can just pop your Night Move and start healing a lot of damage back if they're focusing on you if you go in. The A tier is home to Crustle, Trevenant, and Blastoise. Crustle is really good into one specific Maridon set, and that's the Charge Beam set. You can put a wall behind it so it really can't escape, you can put a wall in front of it so it can't move forward and kill your teams, and you can also Exazer it into your wall or other walls to have it take a lot of damage and for it to just not be able to move. Now, if it is going Electro Drift, you might have a bit of trouble you might have to practice hitting those X scissors at the opportune time to get it CC'd when it's charging up or what have you. Toto and Tree do a lot of the same things. If you need a good defense, go Horn Leech or Surf. If you need some damage, go Rapid Spin, Water Spout, or Curse and Pain Split. Well, Curse and anything really. They, they kind of function the same. Go for Blastoise if you want a bit more damage, go Tree if you want a bit more sustain. They're both good into Maridon because you can toss it around and deal damage to it. Just be careful because depending on what moveset it goes, well no matter what moveset it goes, you will take damage. Probably more so if it goes Electro Drift and be careful on trying to stagger your CC whenever it's in its final form of Charge Beam. Finally in the S tier we have Slowbro and Umbreon. Gee, I wonder why. With Slowbro, it doesn't really matter what set Maridon is going, you just have to press your Unite move and you'll be fine. With Umbreon, again, it doesn't matter what set Maridon is going, just use Mean Look and you'll be fine. Lastly, we have Supports, and the only F tier in Supports is Sableye. Outside of your Unite move to potentially send a Maridon back home, you're pretty much left with Knock Off and Confuse Ray. And they're both good for causing distractions, but it's not going to do much to Maridon, especially if it sees you coming, or if it's using its final move of Electro Drift, or if it's just shouting at you with Charge Beam. So, not really the best Pokemon to go up against an EX. In the A tier, we have Wigglytuff, Mr. Mime, and Opa. Wigglytuff's Sing can put your team in a very good position against Maridon. If it's not going the last stage of any of its attacking moves, you could really catch it out. And if you're a rollout user, you could probably do a bit of damage as well. The Unite move on Wigglytuff usually isn't so great, but when you're taking a bunch of damage from Maridon, 
every bit of shielding or health really matters. Mr. Mime is particularly good into the charge beam set because you can place down your light screens, which will either prevent Maridon from moving closer to your team or prevent it from moving back when it's in danger and about to get got. Now, your micro stuns from your night move are also fairly good and could possibly stop Maridon from activating any of its actual damaging abilities. Outside of that, you have Power Swap, which again, any healing against this thing is actually pretty good, so maybe you could heal up your team. Koopa is basically a pseudo healer. It'll drop a portal down and heal its teammates. Just be careful because if a um, Maridon is going charge beam, it'll know exactly where to aim and your team will potentially die instead of getting sent back to base. Lastly, we have the S tier, which involves Eldegoss, Blissey, Clefable, and Comfey. And do you know why they're the S tier? Because they heal. They're healers. That's always going to be good against anything that just deals a bunch of damage to you. You get extra survivability. So there you have it. Alrighty trainers, and that's all we got. Hopefully this information will make Maridon a little bit more manageable for y'all. If y'all got any more tips or any more ideas on how to slay this dragon, drop it below in the comment section. Like the video if this helped you. Uh, like the video if this didn't help you. Just like the video, alright? But yeah, hopefully Ranked gets better, hopefully Timmy Studios knows what it's doing, and hopefully next season we can actually start playing without EXs. Okay trainers, bye bye.